Uh, what up, this is Rama Screen. I'm here with Michael, Lolita, and Christopher regarding Batman vs. Two-Face. That's coming up. The, these three awesome people composed the score for it. So let me start um, with you, Michael. Um, I'm a DC fan. A lot of my fans are DC fans. Uh, and of course, you guys have history. You've, com you've composed for Batman the Animated Series, Batman the Killing Joke. Um, so coming into this project, how do you make sure as a team that you guys keep it fresh, I suppose, uh, as far as bringing new sound to the music? In this instance, it was kind of a fresh take on an older genre, I guess, since we were really doing Nelson Riddle and Neil Hefty. And Neil Hefty was one of my teachers, by the way, so kind of you know carrying the torch for that. Um, and I think the freshness quotient is really a result of our collaboration with the producer and or, or producers, um, in this case, James Tucker. And I know that he wanted it to have that retro feeling because we'd done that for the first film, The uh, Return of the Cape Crusaders. But this film kind of takes it to a different place because it's more story driven and less of a sort of a retro gag kind of a, a film. Um, so, yeah, uh, we talked with the producer. We talked about what he wanted. He was very interested in having this feel more like Batman the Animated Series. So like a long form version of that kind of a thing. But with paying homage to Neil Hefty and Nelson Riddle in that style. So we took those cues and mashed them all together and came up with what we did. And it was a lot of fun. I've, I've interviewed a lot of composers over the years. Uh, I've mentioned to you that uh, the last time was Bear McCrary. Uh, but this is the first time I interviewed three composers all at once. Um, briefly, talk about your collaboration as a team. Like, um, what do you do when there's disagreements? Well, we have a physical altercation with one another. No. <laughs> um, we really don't have too many disagreements. Um, I think because we started out under Shirley Walker's supervision, she kind of started this whole idea uh, with us. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of respect for one another, so we, we figure out a way to, to work it out. I mean, it's sometimes having a little bit of disagreement is kind of spices it up, spices it up because we can actually think about, you know, well, should we play it this way or that way? Or, or um, I know sometimes during a spotting session with the producer where we figure out where the music should go, it's, uh, it's often one of the best times to have a lively discussion about what the purpose is of that music at that particular time. Because as you know, music can completely influence the feeling of a, of a particular moment. So not too many disagreements. And uh, as far as the team aspect of it, well, most, most uh, composers do have teams in place now. So it's uh, for every single, if you see a music by one person, that person has a pretty big team behind him or her, generally speaking, especially for the big tentpole films and television shows. So in our case, uh, what you see is what you get. So you, there's no person writing music uh, in the closet that you haven't met. <laughs> you know, it's like secret composer that you haven't met. It's it's us writing the score. So it's I think that's a really great plus with working uh, with us. Mr. Christopher, let me ask you this. Um, you said you've seen the film without giving away too much, <laughs> spoiling away for the fans. I'm so excited for it. Um, this is all. This also marks uh, the late, great Adam West final Batman film, I believe. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. So um, what, how does that factor in to the creating of this music? or uh, And also, what can the fans anticipate about this installment compared to the previous ones, uh, Return of the Cape Crusader? Well, it's too bad you had to cut out all this stuff that we just told you because we can't reveal anything. <laughs> 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 no, um, actually, gosh, even from the first one, it was such a thrill to work with with Adam West, and because his so, his voice is so iconic and his portrayal of Batman, we've all we all grew up with, and um, uh, evidently, yes, you're right. It was his last Batman appearance. It was almost his last project that he worked on. I believe that he recorded some other dialogue for um, Family Guy that he's also a character on. Um, so it was his last kind of standalone project. Um, what to look forward? I think we have our. our <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. Adam, the ghost of Adam. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think what the fans can look forward to is um, a, a kind of a continuation of, of of the producers and the writers ex expressing themselves in this genre because the first uh, Batman. 66 movie that we did, the Return of the Cape Crusaders, it was kind of a let's set out to 
do an animated version of this. But then with this film, the writer and the producers kind of got to stretch their wings and say, okay, we've established it. We've, we've kind of gone through the, the tropes that you expect. And then let's take it further and kind of uh, put our own spin on it. So it, it's a lot more, it's, it is darker in some ways. Uh, it's a lot more emotionally engaging. Um, uh, uh, William Shatner as Two-Face brings an incredible amount of depth to the, the character and to the story. And I think that uh, people watching it won't have any idea what turn it's going to take next. I know that part of composing of music for a film or TV is to create motive or theme for uh, the characters. So could you explain the process for this one, especially you know, with Two-Face involved? Well, I'll take this one because um, actually I think I, I ended up having the first sequence that had Harvey Dent in it. And so, you know, we sort of draw lots for this sort of thing, and I ended up with that scene, so I ended up writing a theme for Harvey and for Two-Face. Um, and I think theme creation, it's very collaborative, usually. Um, and, and, you know, whether or not to create a theme is, is part of the collaboration. You know, is it appropriate? Is it needed? Will it help the story, or will it just distract? Because um, you don't want the music to do anything but support. Uh, in this case, it was totally necessary because you have this sort of duality going on, this Jekyll and Hyde thing. And it was a real challenge to sort of to find a motive and a melody that would kind of express both of those things and be the character that it needed to be, but yet be the same theme. So that that was the real challenge. But I, I'm very excited with how, how we ended up with it. Um, you know, as the film progresses, Obviously, you get to see the theme played out in different scenes and different scenarios for for Harvey and for Two Face, and so we would talk with James about it. It's like, is this dark enough? Is this too sweet? Is it too light? Does it need to be? You know, how how does it feeling to you? And of course, you know, he, the producer James, has this vision in his head of what he wants it to be. So it was really his barometer that led that that led us in that direction. And I think that's true of just about any theme we write, whether it feels right to the producer or not, is the real litmus test. I know that the Batman Return Cape Crusader got nominated for Annie, correct? So how important is it for you to be recognized or be awarded for your work? It de definitely feels good to be recognized and, sure. and rewarded. Um, it's, it's kind of a wonderful nod from your peers that they think what you've done is good. And, and in the case of our Annie nomination, to be among the greats like Hans Zimmer and Alexander Desplat, to name, name just a few. Um, and I, I've told this story before, but I, I congratulated Hans on winning. And he said, oh, was I nominated? <laughs> so, so, you know, it puts things into perspective. I mean, bless his heart. He's, he's, really, a, 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 he's really a great guy, but without, with all that stuff going on, you know. Some, so for us, you know, being there at the, at the awards and, and having a chance to talk to so many different voice actors and directors and producers and directors and just kind of celebrate celebrate everybody's accomplishments is is generally kind of the most fun aspect. Can you talk a bit about uh, coming upcoming New York Comic Con? What's the plan there for Batman vs. Two-Face? And also, I know you have another project going on over there, right, in, in New York? So uh, New York is uh, it's just going to be a wonderful, wonderful experience, I hope. Um, it's a jam-packed for me because on the Saturday before Comic-Con, on the 7th, I have a U.S. premiere of a classical piece I've written called Overture to Light at Carnegie Hall. So, so we say, you know, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? You practice, practice, practice. But in my case, how I got to Carnegie Hall is that a wonderful conductor by the name of Amy Anderson was putting together a concert about immigration, the theme of immigration. And uh, I, she happened to hear a piece that I wrote. And, you know, because of YouTube, she was able to actually hear it with an orchestra. And she thought it would be a great opener for her concert. So I'm, I'm really thrilled. So Saturday night will be, you know, dressed, dressed to the nines, you know, with high heels and sparklies. And then uh, Sunday uh, on, on Comic-Con Day, I will probably be, you know, very casual, but going to the premiere of Two-Face um, with, uh, I'll go with my husband and, and with our publicist and, and just enjoy and, and hopefully have a chance to speak with all the, with all the panelists and, and meet some fans. So I'm really, really thrilled. 
we kind of try to pass it around. I mean, we used to go to everything together as a trio, kind of locked arms. And, and uh, but this year, you know, with everybody being so busy, we've had, we've kind of spread it out. I mean, Michael went to San Diego Comic Con and Chris met a bunch of wonderful fans at Convergence in Minneapolis. So it's, uh, I think it's our, for me, it's one of the greatest joys to meet people that actually know what we, what we do you know, and can appreciate it. Questions is for all three of you. I'm going to start with Christopher and then Lolita and then uh, Michael. Um, it's a two-parter question for each one of you. What is your advice to aspiring composers out there and what does DC mean to you? Uh, my advice for aspiring composers is just follow the dream. Um, I think that it's a very, Hollywood is a very unforgiving town or anywhere that you want to try and be a film composer. So you, you got to start with believing in yourself and uh, wanting to work towards that goal and, and don't give up. And what does DC mean to me? It's uh, just been amazing to be a wonderful part of, of that, that family with all the history and all these characters that uh, we've uh, been you know, invited into our studios and everybody else is invited into their homes for so many years. I'll start with the DC part. Um, ditto with what Chris said. Um, DC has definitely brought a wonderful gift to me and my family. It's been it's been great to work on these various properties and just be able to delve into the stories and learn more about the characters and learn from the fans about our music, you know, get feedback from them as to what they like and and why they like it. It's 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 very very powerful. Um for the aspiring composer, my advice really I well, I have a lot of advice, but my uh, biggest thing is to really be engaged and to really give it 100%. And that doesn't mean just working on your career. That also means learning about the directors and the producers and what people are working on and, and learn about the stories and learn about learn about just become a better person and more interesting person because people don't really want to work with just music. They want to work with a person that can help them tell a story and through their music somehow help elevate the product, the project that the, the director or producer are working on. So um, don't worry so much about doing everything perfectly. Just worry about, don't worry, just do it and, and engage and, and throw yourself into it because it's really kind of now is the time because one day you'll wake up and it'll be like, oh, where did that time go? I, 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 I thought I would go for it. I would go for it when I'm ready. And the thing is, you know, you're never really ready. You just do it and just, just hopefully have a good time in the process. I'll talk about writing first or, or the career aspect of it. Um, I guess the best advice I can give is write and then get up the next day and write and get up the next day and write and keep writing. Write, 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 write music, write as much music as you possibly can. And Use your music as an opportunity to collaborate um, because that's really what this is all about. It's really about, it's not just about the music. It's important to do a lot of writing so that you can find your voice and so that you can hone your technique. But at the end of the day, it's not just you. It's you working with a producer, you working with a director, you working with a filmmaker, um, maybe sometimes a music editor. It's you and someone else. And so developing the skill to be able to talk to other people, find out what's inside their head, be able to collaborate effectively without getting offended or, you know, or, or in any way bringing any negative energy to the, to the fold. It's all about, you know, making something great together. So write and collaborate. That's, that's my advice to you guys. Um, and as far as DC goes, working on DC properties for me, it's just been a dream come true. And I mean that in a very concrete way, because I'm from a very small town in the Midwest, um, you know, grew up having this idea that maybe someday I'd move to a big city and, you know, have this great career as a film composer. I mean, there there's a remarkable amount of similarity between the story of Clark Kent and my story. Not the Superman part, just the Clark Kent sure, part. <laughs> oh, well, well, well. <laughs> but I, I guess what I'm trying to say and even bring that up is that stories like that meant so much to me as a kid. They gave me hope. They gave me a reason to keep going. They gave me, they instilled in me the idea that pretty much anything is possible if you really put your heart into it. And so I don't know what more to say about DC other than thanks. <laughs> you know, thanks for this wonderful career that I've had. And you can just bet, bet 
that once I had the opportunity to write for DC properties and especially for the Superman franchise, my heart was in it 200%. So, you know, I think I was prepared from a little kid to do this. <laughs> and so here I am doing this. And so anyway, I, it just means the world to me. So thanks. Michael, Lolita, and Christopher, thank you so much for the opportunity. And congratulations on Batman versus Two-Face. Thank you. Thank you.